Hey, what's up, guys? Of course, me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. And we're going to continue on with our lessons with the Ableton Live and the MPC. So I'm going to load up Ableton right here, which is Ableton 11.3. And what we're going to do here, we're going to use an MPC software, which is the MPC 2.12.3, as a plugin inside of Ableton Live. Now, my last video, I made a template. So if I come to the user section right here, this is my own template, so I'll click here. I have this template right here. I'll click on that, it'll load up. Now the reason why I make a template, I wanna be able to communicate with the MPC software. And if I make up beats or something, I make up a project I'm doing in there, I wanna probably pull the beats and the project data out and put it inside of Ableton Live. So by making this template, it makes it easy for me to transport anything over which is really great. I can be working in an MPC any time I want to work in that, or a client has it in his own software. He wants me to work inside of Ableton Live. It's pretty simple. I just load my template up, and then I just pick out which is the project I want to load into Ableton, and I want to map it out to specific tracks inside of Ableton. So as you can see right here, we've loaded up. And my first one here, his first track is the MPC. That's my MIDI track right there. And if I go on here, we'll see the rest of my audio, right? So that's one. And the last track here is 16. So I have like 15 audio tracks and one MIDI track right here. Now, once I know this is up, I'll see down here in the bottom. We'll see here that we have the MPC software right here, right? If I want to see that, click right here. And there it is, my MPC software. Pretty simple. Now, what I want to do at this point is I like to load something in. So I may go here to my browser section here and look for something I want to load in, you know. Look, anything in here, look in here, this section right here. So what I want to do is probably go to here, let's say. And we're going to load something in so you get to see what it looks like. I'm going to load a track in from here. I'm going to load the uh, sequence in. Right, I'm going to go here to Trap Soul, and we're going to go here to something here called JS Hearts. You see it's 120 BPM, and it's F sharp minor. We'll click on that, and I'll double click on this, and it loads pretty quickly. Love that. So I'm just closing out this browser section right here, and I have the capability to load it in. Now, the beauty of making the template was I already mapped out these tracks. So, for example, we'll go back into here. You'll see here, this is audio 2, and that's 3, 4. Right here, this is 5, 6. This is 7, 8. This is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I scroll to the end. You'll see here, the last one here is, little, is 31, 32, right? So I've got these stereo tracks. I'm popping in here. And so what I want to do next is go back to the actual plugin. So I go here to this one right here. I'll see that. Here's my plug in my MPC, and I want to see these sounds. Got these sounds right here. It's all in there. But they're all coming right here in this one track right here, which is my mini track, which I don't really need. Right? What I do need here in this case, I would like to separate these tracks. And that's why we make the template. So, of course, I come back to here. That's my kick drum. I'm actually scoot this over to the side, move this over here more. You guys can see it better. Bass drum's here. I want to set the output of the bass drum to be proper, so I know it's going to go to 3 4. Hit it now. That's 3 4. Same here with the snare drum. That's going to be 5 6. I go here to the output. I come down here, go to stereo output, and that's 5 6. This next one's going to be 7, 8. And so as I roll through these, it's pretty quickly, as you can see, I know where we're going at 7, 8. And this is going to be 9, 10. And we have 9, 10 here. So I just want to make sure I pick where sounds are. So there's a sound right there. I want to make sure I got this sound coming in. And so uh, that was 9, 10. This one's going to be 11, 12. I come to here. And you can see it's pretty simple to do. I can go through this forever. I'm just going to pick out what I can pick out here and get stuff going on. And we go 13, 14 here. Now the purpose of this is to make sure everything's separated. And that we've got them all on separate tracks. 
And this black, this is going to be blank. You see I run through here? That's blank, so I'm not going to use that one, right? So I know that that one is pad number 7, which is one right here. And so last one was 13, 14, so it's going to be 15, 16 right here. And we have something on that track. I come to here. I go down here where it says stereo output. I go to 15, 16 right here. Then next I've got more stuff right here. Okay. That's nine, so I want to come to here. And last one was 15, 16. We're going to go right here. This is going to be 17, 18. Next one's going to be this track right here. 1920. I like that. 1920 is for 10. Let's go ahead to 11. And this is 21. Now we're going to 12. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Right? So we got 23, 24, 21, 22, 19, 17, perfect. So I got more people. What's this right here? We need to get 25. That's 25. Let's get 24 right here. 25, 26. What's this one here? Oh, we'll get that one too. Let's get that. 2728. Oh, we got one more here. And this is going to be 2930. And the last one? Cool. Let's get this up, hooked up to right here. I'm going to stereo output. And that's 32, 31, 32. And everything's lined up. So now that I've got it lined up, I got every output of all these sounds together. What I want to do next, though, at this point, is I'd like to at least be able to see if they're going to play. So I'll, I'll just hit right here, actually, and press play. <laughs> Now, one thing I want you to notice too here is that there is no more of a control I have with the NPC. There's no stop start here whatsoever. All I can really do is play this thing. But my BPM will appear here in the Ableton Live. You see right here, that's 120 BPMs right there. I can change it here too. Watch it changes here. It changes there too as well. So you can see it right here. These BPM changes here. And of course, the BPM's right there. So I've got these things lined up. What I want to do events is track them out, right? You know, I want to put them all on a separate track and track them together. So what I want to do now that I saw if they work, I'll come back to here. I would like to get them all inside of Ableton. It's pretty simple here. To record them, I press record right here or press record here. I can record one at a time. Gee, that sounds like fun. No, it isn't. That's tedious. That's crazy. So look. We're going to press Command, we're on a Mac. We're going to press our record, and now we can record on every track. I'm holding down the Command button right here, and now I'm able to pick and select the tracks I want to record to. That's very important. So let me scroll back over here to the end. Good. And get some more tracks here that I want to record to. Make sure every track's going to be recorded to here to the end. That says 31, 32. And up to here, it says this one here is 3, 4. So that they've all been lined up to be recorded upon, which is great. Now, the recording's pretty simple right here. Uh, we're going to start with zero, of course. And so what I'll do here is um, I'll just press record. Now, once I have everything recorded out inside of Ableton Live, it's always a good thing to label each track to know what's there. So I will come to here. Of course, I've started labeling some stuff here. What's in this track? I don't know. So I always keep the NPC software right there. If I don't see it, I click right here in a little uh, wrench, and it pulls right up. 
I know this next track here after I got the snare. And I'll put this one to be the hi-hat right there, right? I'll come back to here. Click on that. I'm going to rename this as hi-hat. I'll press enter there. That's important to actually label everything and write it down. Also, I want to keep the MPC plugin that I'm using right here tied to this first track because that way I can see the original. I may want to go back in and change one of these sounds or add something. Well, I can do that pretty easily, right? I would say I may want to go to bank B right here. I may want to put a new sound here. I'll track it in by selecting a route where I want to put it at and track it to a brand new track. Pretty simple to do and easy to do also inside your MPC. But it's a cool way to work with the MPC software and your Ableton Live software to track stuff in and out. And also, it's a great software, Ableton Live. You can mix in here and do everything else you can do anywhere else. And it's a much more sophisticated software for mixing than there is with the MPC software. Just want to let you know that. Now, if you got any questions, you can hit us up also at SoundBookings.com and just ask me what you need to know. And also, we do do Zoom lessons on Ableton Live as well. Now, of course, before I end this, I want to come to here and I want to save this, really, right? So I come to here and I want to save this as what? I'll save it as this. Right? And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this Hearts. It's called SK Hearts. That's it right there. Boom. I want to save it to my desktop currently. That's all I'm going to do right now. I'll press save. And it's on my desktop, which is kind of cool. And you see right here the name change. I know where it's at. I continue to work on it. It's on my desktop. And add more stuff or do what I want to do. But I probably want to mix it down too, which we'll cover in our next video. How to mix once you get your stuff out of your MPC and mix it in Ableton Live. Any questions, hit me up. We're at SampleKings.com. And it's always cool to get a Zoom lesson from us. We're here to support you. Peace.